everyone, Ivy here. Today I'm participating in the challenge posted by So Loud, and it is 20 questions to get to know you during quarantine for costumers. First of all, thank you to So Loud for hosting. I really appreciate it. This is an awesome challenge, and I'm really excited to participate in it. I feel a little bit weird answering questions that nobody really asked me, so hopefully this isn't super boring for you, but we can talk a little bit about costumes and how I got started and all of that wonderful information that you definitely are so interested in and fascinated to find out more about me. Okay, first question is, what was your first costume? So I have two answers for this one, which is my first uh, regular person costume, which was the pink ball gown from The Little Mermaid. And my second answer is my first historical costume. So when I started to feel like just sewing for Halloween wasn't really enough for anymore since it's my favorite holiday, I started looking into other opportunities to wear costumes to different events. And eventually I stumbled on historical costuming. So my very first historical costume was an 18th century robe a la anglaise. I actually still have that dress and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, the way that it came out, even though it was my first try. Um, it does need some new trim, but honestly, I would probably still wear it again, which is not something I can say about most of my early costumes. Next question is, what is the costume that you are the most proud of? And again, I have two answers for this one as well. So I'll do like regular non-historical costume, which was a transforming butterfly gown. And I'm really proud of that one because it's one of the first times that I made something that was really complicated and I figured it all out on my on my own. So I'm really happy with that one. Um, it just was really complicated and I didn't have any guidance on how to do it. So I'm proud that I was able to come up with something that worked. And then my um, historical costume that I'm the most proud of was a, my first robe a la Francaise, which was inspired by the Dior 1949 Fall and Winter collection. And it has like a few thousand rhinestones on it that I all set by hand myself. And the thing that I'm probably most proud of is that honestly, it was a really creative idea. I'm proud of myself for being able to come up with that. And it is really beautiful. It is so sparkly and it is something that I wish I had more opportunity to wear. What costume do I dream of making? Most of the costumes that I tend to dream about are usually extant examples from museums. There's this one in particular that is a navy blue and white striped seaside gown from the mid 1880s. Oh, and it is perfection. I absolutely love this gown, but I have not had any success in finding the, exactly the right stripes to make this particular dress. So I decided that if I was gonna actually try and duplicate this garment, that I didn't wanna settle for the wrong stripe and that I would much rather um, either make it myself or wait until the perfect fabric comes along. So um, I would love to make that one someday since the pattern is not necessarily that complicated, but it's been difficult to source materials for. Sewing task I love versus sewing task I hate. I absolutely love the process of pinning and then actually sitting down to sew at the machine. It really makes you feel like the project is coming together and that things are happening and you are actually making a garment. And something that I absolutely hate is ironing for obvious reasons. Would you rather sew wool or silk? I would definitely prefer to work with silk just because I prefer to make um, ball gowns and fancy stuff more than I like to make daily wear. Okay, themed event or pick your own? I have to say themed event all the way. I really struggle to come up with good ideas for garments on my own and having nothing to sew for during quarantine has been really tough on me. <sighs> big ball or intimate dinner? For sure a big ball. Something about being in a big, beautiful, sparkly room with um, a ton of other people who are all dressed in the same era really makes you feel like you're part of that time period Machine sewing or hand sewing? Machine all the way. Wigs, hair pieces, or natural hair? As much as I would love to use hair pieces, I have not been able to find anything that would match my hair color. So um, I'd love to use them, but I can't. I use only my natural hair, and sometimes I feel like it really shows because I don't always have enough hair to achieve every hairstyle. Um, five small businesses for costume related things. Most of mine are gonna be pattern makers because I make pretty much all of my own stuff myself. I love black snail patterns on Etsy. I feel like they don't get enough love. 
Their instructions are incredibly clear, they're super affordable, and the PDFs are put together better than any other pattern PDF I've ever worked with. So I'd recommend Black Snail Patterns. I would also recommend Atelier Silk Corsets, also on Etsy. They have dozens of extant corset patterns to choose from, so there's a lot of variety. Um, I would also recommend American Duchess, of course. Five YouTubers that you should check out are, of course, So Loud. Uh, I also love Brendan McKinney. It's a newer channel that focuses on antique parasols and I'm hoping he keeps uploading videos because they're amazing. I also recommend um, Zach Pinsent, but I imagine that if you follow me, you probably also follow that channel. Oh, I'd recommend um, Costuming Drama and unfortunately this YouTuber hasn't uploaded in a while, but DIY Stopia has some really amazing stuff. And also So Steen, who focuses on um, digital embroidery. Favorite color, definitely yellow. Kind of a weird one. Pearls or sparkles? Sparkles. Definitely sparkles. A costume trip that I've dreamed of taking is one that doesn't really exist. What I really want more than anything in this world is to go on a big weekend trip and just wear Victorian clothing for the whole entire weekend with people who are also wearing Victorian clothing for the whole weekend. So um, unfortunately, while there are a couple of small festivals here and there, there's nothing that's really quite like what I'm looking for, which is just like a big house party for people who want to dress in a specific Victorian era. Um, who knows, maybe I'll plan it myself sometime, but I'm not sure if anyone would come. There's probably a reason that this doesn't already exist. Beer. Beer is definitely my favorite cocktail. A customer that I would love to meet is Rachel Maxey. She really does more um, kind of like pinup vintage stuff than she does at costumes, but she just seems like a really cool person and I would love to meet her. Plain or patterned? Probably plain just because there are a lot of historically accurate patterns that I don't particularly care for. Use a pattern or make your own. Definitely use a pattern. I am not formally trained, I am 100% self-taught, so I don't really have the skill set to make my own patterns from scratch. Um, I can usually cobble something together if nothing else is available, but I much prefer um, to use other people's patterns. It's just a lot easier for me. Favorite era to wear is probably um, Victorian and Edwardian, especially the later Victorian and earlier Edwardian, but my favorite all-time thing to make is definitely Robe à la Française. They are so beautiful and once you know how to make them, they actually go together pretty quickly and they always are just so impressive at the end and they really are just the fanciest of historical costumes. So there's something that's really satisfying about making a robe à la française. One thing that you don't know about me is that I am super lazy about making um, under the appropriate undergarments. So normally I do not wear a chemise. I'm much more likely to just be wearing like a random fast fashion tank top and some leggings rather than like what you're actually supposed to wear under this stuff and that definitely includes today all right i think that's it for me so thank you for watching and i'm gonna go have a beer